Secure text messaging is one of the simplest ways to protect your information from companies, including cell phone carriers, from snooping on your data. I have reviewed each of these on previous channels, but they have changed since then, so it's time to revisit them like some fine wine and see which text messaging app is best for security and privacy. Now, the biggest concern we have with secure text messaging is encryption. If they are indeed secure, they should have end-to-end -end encryption, even if a government agency sent them a warrant so they would not be able to turn over any text messages because they could not see them. End-to-end -end encryption, also called E2EE or E2E encryption, means that only you and the person you are sending the message to can see what is being sent, and that should include text, photos, videos, and attachments. Now, before we get into the third-party app recommendations, it's really important to point out that both Apple's iMessages and Google's Android Android Messages app have end-to-end -end encryption enabled. In the case of Apple's iMessages, this is the standard app that Apple's iPhones come with, and it will serve up both standard non-encrypted SMS messages as well as encrypted ones. Now, this can be really convenient, but if you don't pay attention, you could be sending non-encrypted messages without knowing it. The best way to tell is the text bubbles. If they are blue, that means you're sending encrypted messages to somebody else who is using iMessages. If it's green, that means the receiver is using something other than iMessage and the text is not encrypted. iMessage does need to be enabled on the phone for encryption to be turned on, and your iCloud backups should be set up securely too in order to keep everything locked up nice and tight. But using iMessages is definitely a good option for iPhone users if you don't mind the fact that Apple is the company behind the app. On Android's messages, if you see a little lock icon underneath the message, that means it's encrypted. You can also click on the three buttons in the conversation and click details to see if the conversation is actually end-to-end -end encrypted. That means that both parties are using messages. Now, the unfortunate part of both of these is your conversations will only be encrypted if the receiver is using the same type of smartphone operating system that you're using and is also using the same app. Android to Android or Apple to Apple. Neither of these companies has agreed to make an end-to-end -end encryption standard cross-platform, although Google's special type of RCS protocol, which is the backbone of their end-to-end -end encryption, without going into a ton of nerdy details, I will put a link down below to their white paper in case you want to read it. It is open and they have invited Apple to use it too, but Apple has not done so yet and probably never will because they want everybody to use iPhones. Now, since we have third-party applications that can be downloaded on both operating systems and allow you to send end-to-end -end encrypted chats, no matter which operating system you're using, we know that cross-platform encryption and compatibility is possible, but everyone has to agree on the same protocols. And if tech companies don't play nice, that puts our privacy at risk. So how can you send encrypted messages cross-platform? In my case, my friends and family are basically split 50-50 in terms of Android versus Apple. I'm on Android, so I have to use a third-party app to get encrypted messages to my friends on iPhones, and they have to use that app too. So this whole conversation about privacy is really important, and it brings me to my sponsor for today's episode, Delete Me. In today's digital world, our personal information is constantly exposed online. In the case of mobile, one study showed 52% of apps are sharing data with third parties, which can include data brokers. But Delete Me has been my tool of choice to make the exposure less of a problem. I signed up for Delete Me as a customer many years ago, and they have continuously removed my personal information from data broker websites, giving me peace of mind and one less thing to put on my adulting list of things to do because it's a very long list. Delete Me takes your privacy seriously, and I appreciate that you can protect your Delete Me account with two-factor authentication, and they work tirelessly to remove your information from data broker websites. They provide you with regular updates and a detailed privacy report every single quarter, so you can see the difference they have made in protecting your personal information over time. I save all of my privacy reports so I can visually see how Delete Me is doing over time, 
online. And since I first signed up many years ago, they have doubled the amount of data brokers that they actually scan for matches. Don't let your personal data be up for grabs. Use the code SNUBS at checkout, that's S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off any of the consumer plans. Or you can just click the link below and hit up joindeleteme.com slash Morse code to sign up today. And that code will automatically apply at checkout when you go to that specific link. Sign up now, safeguard your personal information today, and a huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. Like iMessages and Google's messages, some applications can replace your default SMS app and still have end-to-end -end encryption too, but only other people using that same app will also have encryption because all the apps use different kinds of protocols. For example, you could totally replace the default app on your phone with Facebook Messenger, but some folks may not want to stick all of their unencrypted SMS messages and all of their encrypted messages in one app, specifically one made by a major tech company like Facebook, and they may prefer prefer to have a separate app just for the encrypted messages. In this case, I've got a few options for you to consider, all of which are free to use, and it's going to be pretty obvious which one is my favorite. So we already have the two built-in ones, but the next one is called Signal. For a long time, Signal did support SMS messages too, but they have removed this from Android in recent months for very logical reasons, but it still makes me sad. But if both parties are using Signal, then this is the cream of the crop when it comes to end-to-end -end encryption. In fact, the protocol that Signal uses for encryption is so good that WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger also adopted it too. The big difference though is Signal was founded by a cryptographer and an expert in the field of encryption. It's run by a nonprofit, not a big social media tech company. Signal is the number one choice of security experts for a variety of reasons. It lets you do regular messages. You can do voice and video calls, group messaging. You can send photos and attachments. And nowadays you can make the app look really pretty with colorful icons and GIFs and animations and custom wallpapers. A useful feature that they have is self-destruct, which allows you to make messages disappear after a set amount of time. You are required to have a phone number to sign up, but if you are using Signal to talk to people who don't necessarily need to know your main phone number, you can also set it up with a secondary number and share your Signal account with them without disclosing your primary phone number. Number two is WhatsApp, and I do have a valid reason for including this, so continue watching. Even though this messaging app is owned by Meta or Facebook, many people choose WhatsApp because of its popularity overseas. WhatsApp is very, very popular internationally, and it is end-to-end -end encrypted by default. You don't have to go into the settings and turn it on. While trust is a concern due to its parent company, the app itself is full of features and it's very easy to use. Given that WhatsApp is free, it's cross-platform, it's user-friendly and very easy to use, it's a common go-to. Messages are encrypted with the Signal protocol, but metadata, which is shared with its parent company, is not. Features include cute things like GIFs, photos and videos, voice messages, video calls, and group combos. I personally don't use WhatsApp because it is owned by Facebook, but I would be doing a disservice if I did not include it. Unlike most security and privacy apps that end up in these videos that I do, these video recommendation lists, a major consideration for messaging apps is popularity and convenience. If other people are not using the private messaging app, then you either A, cannot send them messages through that app, or B, your messages won't be encrypted by default. I also wanted to give a shout out to some other apps. While these ones are not as popular as my two picks or the integrated apps that come with your phone, it might be harder to get your friends or family to move to them so you do get that perk of encryption or they might cost money. All of these are optional applications you may want to consider. That includes, there's several of them, there's Threema, Telegram, Wire, Wicker, Silent Circle, Briar, Matrix Element, Session, and Facebook Messenger. Now each of these has pros and cons, but no None of them include any major features that were not included in my top picks. 
Some of them, like Telegram, do not enable encryption by default, and that's why I did not include it at the top, or it's not available for group chats. Others, like Facebook Messenger, are owned by a social media company, so there's an issue of trust, just like with WhatsApp. Telegram can hide your phone number, so at least that's a plus. Element is a cool option too that has defaulted end-to-end -end encryption. It's got strong crypto security, it's free. This one uses a matrix federated decentralized platform, which is very similar to how Mastodon is set up. So that also means it might be slow to add new features since there's several different servers going on. The usability and ability to get normal people to adopt it might be much harder as well. This one is really intriguing though, and I would love to give it a more thorough video if you are interested. Session is limited. It's not heavily adopted. Briar is another really cool one, but it's not available on iOS. So since it's not cross-platform, for iOS and Android, I couldn't include it at the top, and the features are extremely limited. Threema is really good in terms of security, probably the best of my alternative options, but it costs five bucks on iPhone, so that might be hard to get people to adopt it as well. For me, getting folks outside of my like little nerdy hacker circle of people that I've grown up knowing at conventions to adopt another app just for encryption is very, very tough. So using something that is free, that's cross-platform, not to mention easy to set up and use, is extremely important when it comes to these messaging apps. I make these recommendations with the understanding that my audience is no longer predominantly infosec and hacker. I'm a content creator first, so I need reliability, cross-platform, and convenience. Signal still brings me those features, though the loss of SMS, while understandable, makes it less convenient, and again, I'm very sad. Diehards, though, don't get mad at me. Read the reviews on Google Play. I am not the only one that feels that way. <laughs> I know that I have folks in my audience who are both InfoSec experts as well as people who just want to get a little bit better at online security. So I am curious if you would choose one of these or if you just prefer to stick with Google Messages now that it has RCS, which is end-to-end -end encrypted as long as both people have Google Messages, or Apple's iMessage with their own encryption. I am not bogged out by the fact that Google owns Messages, so I like that all of my Android folks get end-to-end -end encrypted chaps with me via RCS, but I would love to hear your opinions as well. Watch these videos for more security and privacy recommendations that do not sacrifice convenience and subscribe for more. Bye y'all.